Now we are talking about, we are hungry, aren't you hungry? Is your petrol price not too expensive? It is. We heard that we may be going to IMF, uh, which the NDC recognized as a defeat for the N NPP. Honorable Minister, when people see in the street and say they are hungry, what do you tell them? I tell them that I understand what you are talking about because the general cost of living has gone up. My wife tells me every time about how the same amount of money that a month ago could keep the house can no longer keep the house because the prices of food, transportation, many basic items have gone up and that increase is also leading to an increase in general price levels because if general prices have gone up then people also increase their charges for all of uh, the other things around us. And we are clear in our minds why we are having a cost of living crisis. We are having a cost of living crisis globally for two reasons. 2020, when Ghanaians were calling for lock us down, lock us down, lock us down, the implication of a lockdown even for a month is that economic activity grinds to a halt. The woman who sells breakfast here and the one who sells Indomie at the other junction, they couldn't even come to work. They couldn't earn anything. So their financial position was going to reduce. They were going to be worse off. Multiply that by the 33 million people across the country and take out just the few people who could work, essential services, for even that one-month period. And now look at the entire globe as countries were shutting down. So you have supply chain challenges. Therefore, inflation is going up all around the world because there are limited products being produced as against before, and therefore prices are going up. Locally, what is happening to governments is that once the economy cringes, the revenue you expect, you are not getting it. Meanwhile, there are expenditures that you have committed to that you must pay. In the U.S., for example, the fellow government workers, they said, you can't continue earning the same salary that you earn every time. Because now, government is having a tough time. We are shutting down. So you can only earn a certain small percentage so of your salary. So wage went down in America, federal wages. It, yes. Mm -hmm. In the U.S., they fellowed. In Ghana, we never did. Every government it. worker got paid what they had to be paid. And asked them not to pay water. We then added what, because water was necessary to protect ourselves against COVID. We added electricity for a period. There were a lot of things that we did on the expenditure side. In addition to our traditional expenses, prior to that, 2017 to 2019, the Ghanaian economy had been doing very well. Now, when we did all of this in 2020, bam, that was the first shock. So you notice that our performance in 2020 was terrible. 2021, we started recovering. and we we're hopeful that 2022, we're going to be able to recover a bit faster. And then Russia, Ukraine come hits us in the first quarter of the year. So in March, government warned that looking at the signals on the global scene, three things are happening. You are getting a fuel crisis coming. You are getting a food crisis coming because a lot of food items and even the fertilizer for general agriculture is coming from this same area, in addition to the fuel. And then when Europe and America start imposing sanctions and Russia starts reacting, Global financing will be difficult to come by, so you're going to have a finance crisis. So three crises, FFF, fuel, uh, food, finance. It's going to hit us. So government in March introduced a number of measures aimed at mitigating the impact of these things that were going to hit us. We are in a place where we are now assessing how well these measures have done. The numbers don't look good. And that is why you're already beginning to hear, you know, some persons, economists, lecturers, politicians say, listen, you can't solve it with your homegrown solutions, go for assistance from the International Monetary Fund so that you can be in a better place um, to deal with the fiscal challenges. And once you deal with that, you can now come back to use the fiscal, fiscally improved position to try and improve the economic situation in which we are as a country. There's a lot of discussion going on in government uh, currently as we look at the numbers. Yesterday we met with uh, uh, traders and transporters of food items Today, there was a lot of work at the finance ministry looking at all the numbers and all the revenue handles that are coming in. I think that will continue till tomorrow. By Thursday, we're going to cabinet to put the latest findings uh, you know, before the president and his advisors and try and get a sense of where we're going. By the time we hit mid-year, we'd have made a categorical decision. Mid-year? We're already here. Well, 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 well when I say mid-year, I mean the mid-year budget review, okay. which is about three weeks away. Okay. We'd have made a categorical decision on how we need to recalibrate the fiscal and the economic policies uh, to get Ghana onto a certain preferred track. And we can tell the people of Ghana where we are by that time. And so by end of year, we should be doing better? That is the expectation. That's the plan. And to do that by mid-year, we need to correct course because our numbers are not looking good at this point in time. Could we, should we expect more taxes to be announced in the mid-year? I mean, I do not know which measures we will finally agree on. 
and what you would expect in uh, a cabinet of this nature, in a government of this nature, in a democracy of this nature, is multiple suggestions on the way to go. Some will ask for some more taxes or new taxes. Some say keep the old taxes, uh, but juice it a little bit so that it is a bit more efficient. Some are saying, listen, you rather need some more drastic cuts in some of your expenditure items. Um, some are saying restructure your debt somewhere in the middle because you have a huge debt portfolio and it is requiring you to make year-on-year -year debt servicing commitments that are very high, leaving you with very little fiscal space to do anything. So there are multiple suggestions that are coming in. What the administration is doing is going through a process of assessment and consideration, and hopefully by the time we hit media, we'll have clarity on what we need to do. Hmm. Has the uh, uh, ELV occasioned a false start? We are being told that only 10% of expected revenues have been gained. I have, I, have, I have heard that. I've seen that from Gabby's tweets as well. I have uh, you know, uh, inquired from my colleagues at Finance, uh, and they make us understand that by, by Thursday, they will have all the data available for cabinet to consider. I'm not in a position, in all honesty, sitting before you to tell you how well it has performed. Or how but well you will know that on Thursday. I'll know that so on, on Thursday. on Friday, we will know from you. On Friday, we will know, you know at least the latest numbers as we have them uh, uh, currently. But what I do know is that generally, if you look at the total revenue uh, you know, that's accrued as at this time of the year. As against the total planned revenue and the total planned expenditure, we are not necessarily in a good space currently. And so we need to recalibrate the fiscal program. Do we do it internally by raising more taxes or cutting expenses or restructuring debt? Or do we do it externally by going to look for some sort of external support for the Ghanaian uh, 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 fiscal program we are running currently? Those are the issues before us currently being considered. But uh, the president and government are very concerned about the cost of living crisis which is happening in the UK, in the US, in Europe, and in Ghana, and are interested in examining the initial measures that we introduced. 20% cut in general government expenditure, 30% cut in salaries for government officials, and uh, across budgets as well. We took off some margins on fuel, bust margin, uh, UPPF margin, fuel marking margin. Has that contributed enough in reducing what would have been perhaps a very high price in petroleum products, or has that necessarily not achieved much, though it has cost the Treasury um, a lot more. So from March, government has been acting in an attempt to at least mitigate the situation. Has it worked? Has it worked enough? Those are the things we're examining now, and then we can make some determination. Okay, the big question is, uh, we have five minutes to go, isn't it? Get your text messages ready on the economy, if you are getting any. IMF, uh, are we going, if we go, uh, and DC will celebrate as a defeat for the MPP. Is that That's a, a political thing? dimension. Yes, but are we getting ready to IMF so, bailout? So, so let me answer in a number of ways. Mm -hmm. Don't look at just a political dimension that if you go to the IMF, the NDC will celebrate. Mm -hmm. But they will. They've said it already. Oh, I, don't, no, I mean, I'm saying if your fiscal program is in a position where no internal measures um, are leading to the results you are looking for, and you have to resort to that to ensure that your fiscal program is salvaged, then don't think about the politics. Mm -hmm. Do what is necessary. For the people, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's just an aside to that one. But no, we haven't reached a point where that determination can be made. Because we are now going through the process of looking at the numbers. Yes, when you look at the headline numbers, the numbers don't look good. But you need to go through that full interrogation process. How, how is VAT performing? How is E-Levy performing? How are direct taxes performing? How are uh, import uh, uh, duties performing? You've got to go through the full raft as against the expectations, year-on-year year growth, is it lagging, is it on target, is it... You've got to allow yourself the room to do all of that. And then you come to a position. Put alternatives on the table. Are there local alternatives to deal with it? The finance minister has said in some of his previous public comments that he believes that there are local answers to these questions, and he does not think, at least as at the time he spoke, he does not think that um, an external program is required to help improve the fiscal program that we are running. Has that changed based on the latest numbers? You have to give yourself room to analyze all of those ones and take a hard, cold decision, irrespective of the politics or the emotions that are associated with it. Mm.